Okay, people, we're running out of light, so we need to get this recording going. Go. Hello, people of the internet. I literally just finished filming a video five seconds ago. If you're interested in my wonderful lockdown shopping experience, you can check that video in the link that I will write in there. And as I said in that video, I'm so excited to get started with my next sewing project that I decided I'm going to record the intro now. And the reason why now is now is because I just finally received the final thing that I need to start my project. This thing. It's tracing paper in case you didn't watch the other video. It's fine, it's fine, everything's fine. Anyway, so I'm just going to show you what I'm going to be using for this project. First off is the pattern. It's a 1950s style circle skirt and I'm going to be making this style with this straight waistband instead of the wavy one. I don't know if you noticed, but it has pockets. Pockets. I will put links to all of the patterns, materials, anything I can put a link to. I will put a link to down in the description box in case you're interested. So I got it from Reconstruction History. It's not the one that you print yourself, but the one that they send you already printed, which means that it comes in like big, big sheets of paper that you don't have to piece together, but that are just already in one big sheet of paper that you don't get. Never mind. I have some uh, tracing paper that I'm going to be using to trace the pattern because I don't want to cut the original pattern just in case. Then we've got the fabric. It's this beautiful cotton pattern in green, blue, black and red. Yeah, I'm just really excited to get started with this. I don't expect it will be excessively hard, but we all know how that usually goes, right? <laughs> Wish me luck. But yes, that was that was the that was the intro. Short and sweet for once. Mate, I'm getting so good at this. Ow! I always do that. <laughs> Why? Here I am, taking a million years to pin the pattern because I've never done it before and it shows. I'm marking all the notches with thread and adding other marks with tailor's chalk. I'm also marking a seam allowance of 5 eighths of an inch on the sides of the skirt panels. The skirt panels get lined up matching the notches. I did this wrong, but it ended up not mattering and you'll see why in a bit. The panels are pinned and then basted in place. As I mentioned in my previous video, I tried to use a linen thread, but failed terribly because it was too thick. 
So I moved on to silk thread. I sewed all the skirt panels with a running backstitch, which means that I made one backstitch every three or so running stitches. However, I chose to use a backstitch in the areas that would take some strain. That is, below the pocket openings at the sides, below the zip opening at the back and next to the waistband at the front. By the way, I hope you enjoyed that dreadfully blurry footage. Here's how the stitch looks. Next, I pressed the seam open first and then to one side to prepare it for finishing. Hello again, please excuse my face. PMS is kicking my ass this month. I have done a lot yesterday. I have three seams seamed. These are the two back panels and um, they've been sewn up till here which is where the zipper will go so I've only basted that section. This is the seam between the two back panels and the two front panels and it has been sewn up till around here which is where the pocket will start and this is the two front panels which have been sewn all the way because nothing needs to go in there. However, I've run into problems. It turns out the waistband I cut is way too small. I will demonstrate. My waist should fit between that mark and that mark. And it doesn't. It barely fits at all with the fabric there is. Just look at that. It's way too small. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I chose measurement C, which is supposed to be for waists of 28 inches. So it should be 28 inches from the end of the buttonhole to the beginning of the extension. You see, it's a lot longer! That's why it doesn't fit. Okay, so I've come to the conclusion that the right measurement is E, which is two sizes bigger than what I was making before. So you can see waist here, C is supposed to be 28 inches and it's supposed to be 32, but it's not. Of course, now I'm wondering whether the skirt should be cut to the longer measurement because it's not going to be as full as it's meant to be because it just doesn't fit the waistband. And that's annoying. The proportions are going to be all wrong. Uh, why? Each of this is 5 eighths of an inch. So we've got an inch and a quarter per panel. So that's five inches too short. <laughs> I don't want to start again, but I don't see any way around it. Why was this pattern wrong? So I'm going to figure out whether I have enough fabric or not. Hello. Yes, I just finished filming the outro for my pirate shirt video. Here we go again, my friends. Here we go again. I need to stop singing. <laughs> I'm annoying myself. I've got my new fabric. I've got my new pattern. We're ready to go. Again. I guess I decided not to film the sewing of the skirt panels again. But here are the pockets. The two pocket pieces are lined up matching the notches and with right sides facing each other. They are pinned and basted. Then the pockets are sewn with a backstitch all around except for the top and a section on one side as indicated by the notch. Here you can see what I mean. I am back with an update. All of these skirt panels are now attached. I forgot to film how I attach the pockets, so I'm going to show you. There's a pocket. It's only basted at this point. Here we have the pocket. <laughs> You can hopefully see how well has been basted to the seam allowance. This is the seam allowance of the skirt and this is the pocket. 
and I've basted it here and now all I have to do is remove this basting thread which is where the seam of the skirt should be and then sew the final seam exactly on that line where the basting thread was and which is marked now because I've pressed it open Pockets are in now and we are moving on to finishing some seams the instructions assume that you're sewing this skirt by machine, so I'll be using a different method to finish the seams. To do just that, I'm cutting one side of the seam allowance to half the length. Next, I'm folding the longer side over the shorter side, so that it encloses the raw edge and basting it in place. Then, the seam allowance is folded flat against the garment and sewn using whip stitches. Here's the result. It seems I didn't film the sewing of the sides of the waistband, but here I am pressing said waistband after I turned it to the right side. and marking the seam allowance with chalk. Next, I'm marking 5 eighths of an inch of seam allowance at the waist opening of the skirt. I'm drawing one more line, 1 fourth of an inch outside the first one, so that I can run two parallel gathering threads. And here come the gathering threads. I ended up undoing all of this because the stitches were too close together and the gathers looked kinda bad, but the process is the same. Also, it's very important that the stitches in the two lines mirror each other as closely as possible or the gathers will not want to form properly or will look, you know, weird. This is what my first attempt looked like. The next step is pulling on the loose thread to gather the fabric until the length matches that of the waistband. Which is when I came to the realization that I hated the small gathers. So I took the gathering threads out and did it all again. I went over the lines that had faded with more chalk and I decided to mark points half an inch apart to make sure that my gathers were as even as possible. Here's gathering attempt number two. Why haven't chosen another garment with gathers? Why? <laughs> well, I know why. Because gathers are so pretty, but they're also so much work. <laughs> oh no, okay. Let's go. I've pinned pockets to the front side of the skirt because they're going to be sewn to the waistband basically together with the rest of the skirt so now I have to go and learn how to install a zipper which I have no clue how to do You might remember from an age and a half ago that I had basted the zipper opening That temporary seam is pressed open and the zipper is pinned through both the seam allowance and the skirt panel making sure that it is placed directly on top of the seam and 7 eighths of an inch from the upper raw edge of the skirt. Then it is basted. The final sewing is done from the outside of the garment. The instructions say that the zipper should be stitched one fourth of an inch from each side of the seam. I was a bit skeptic about this at first, but it turned out very well, so I guess the pattern wasn't wrong about everything. The stitching should form a square corner at the lower edge. The 
time has come, my friends, to remove the basting stitches and test the zipper. And guess what? It actually works! It's time to work on the waistband. Here I'm pinning the skirt to the waistband, right sides facing each other and matching the notches, while making sure that the gathers are arranged evenly. Next, I'm skipping the basting and going straight into sewing. I'm using a backstitch for this entire seam. Moving on to the other side of the waistband. The first step is to trim the excess seam allowance from the scat to reduce bulk. Then the seam allowance from the waistband is folded inwards and the waistband is pinned to the inside of the skirt, encasing all the raw edges. Finally, it is sewn using whip stitches. Here I've marked the buttonhole placement with thread and I'm slashing through all the layers of fabric with my nail scissors, because they're pointy and sharp. I'm using a regular buttonhole stitch with a single thread in the needle, which was a mistake, the result was rather messy, so I wish I would have doubled the thread, but oh well, it's, it's done now and I refuse to redo it. I didn't film the sewing of the button, I mean, it's a button. But here's the result. You're probably wondering what the heck I'm doing. Well, my friends, I do not own a dress form, so I had to make do. I grabbed my tripod, a pillow, and a belt. And I think it might work. The only way to know, of course, is to actually try this. So I'm going to go and grab my skirt and um, we shall see. <laughs> Wish me luck. Fiona! I think we're all a little bit shocked because this actually works. How? <laughs> just, just, how? <laughs> Okay, I'll take it. I wanted to mention as well that the waistband ended up being a little bit too big for me. So I ended up taking it in by one inch, as you can hopefully see. And I think, as you can see, the skirt actually stretched a lot on the bias. This, you can see here that it's dragging quite a bit here, whereas on this side, it's not at all. Here I was trying to figure out where to put the hem of the skirt. I first tried following the pattern's suggestion, but that didn't go that great. You'll see that in a bit. After choosing a specific length, I measured and pinned the hem all around the skirt. So after spending an hour painstakingly pinning all the skirt, it turns out it's too long. It should be just below the knee, and as you can see, it's not. Those ladies have a lot more legs showing than this. And that, my friends, is a problem. Because I have to do this again. <laughs> okay, here's the new attempt. This looks a lot better. I think the length is going to be right. Let's go test it and see. I think this is something else. That's the right length and off leg. Look at that. The next step is to base the hem into that position.
here and pressing the basted hem to help it stay like that. But it was very hard with all the excess fabric, so I didn't even try to make it unique. Next, I'm marking one and a half inches for the hem. This line is not where I will cut the fabric, but where the seam will be. I'm cutting the excess fabric by eye around half an inch from the line I just drew. Here I'm folding the fabric inwards by the line I drew earlier and basting it in place. I decided to press the hem again after this step to help ease the fabric and avoid as much warping as possible. There is a bit in the end but barely noticeable, so who cares? The final step is to sew the hem using whip stitches. And oh boy, was that a lot of hem! super sunny today, it feels like summer and since I was filming the reveal in the park, yes, the park full of people looking at me funny. If you've been following my videos, you knew I would do this at some point. Was it embarrassing? Yes. Did I care? Well, yes, kind of. Did I do it anyway? Definitely. Anyway, since I was in the park filming the reveal, I figured I would do the outro here as well. Some of the footage had a little bit of blue peeking underneath my skirt. I put a very voluminous skirt underneath. I really loved the look and I decided that was the way to go. So I was wearing two skirts this entire time. But I'm going to show you now a small video of how the skirt looks without the other skirt. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below and if you would like to see some high quality images of the skirt worn in this exact same outfit, 
you can do so in the projects section of my website the link to my website is below and if you enjoyed watching me struggle for reals this time this project was a bit crazy never trust patterns they lie to you if you had fun with my struggles you can go ahead and subscribe to this channel and you can watch me make more stuff and continuously fail very possibly i'm gonna go now okay bye